In this video, we will be studying the anatomy of the common Norwegian rat, Rattus norvegicus. The Norwegian rat is commonly used in studying uh, comparative anatomy of vertebrates, and this is because uh, it displays all the typical mammalian body plans that we would see with all the other uh, mammals that you would study. In other words, uh, what you're going to learn by dissecting the rat is going to be broadly applicable to most of the other mammals. Now let's begin with the external anatomy. The first thing we'll notice is that right up here in the ear area, we have the pena. And this is that flap-like external ear, and it's going to direct the, the sound right into that ear canal called the um, external auditory meatus. When we look at the eyes, uh, one of the things I want you to notice about the eyes is that they're well formed and that you'll have an um, upper and a lower eyelid. But if we spread those apart and we look and towards the corner, we're going to see the nicitating membrane inside that corner area of the eye. And it's used to protect the eye. The whiskers are going to be long and stiff on the hair, and they're going to have a, a tactile or sensory function. And these are uh, known as the uh, bit, uh, vibrisse. Then we'll have our external nares. And um, as we uh, begin uh, our further uh, study of the rat, uh, don't forget that several words will be used to indicate the location of organs and structures within the body. So that the cranium is going to be towards the head, uh, the caudal area will be towards the tail area, the dorsal will be the uh, back side, the ventral will be the belly side, lateral will mean towards the sides, medial will mean towards the middle line, proximal will be nearer or closer to uh, the base of structure, where distal will be further from the uh, base of structure. And when we talk about proximal and distal, this is in relation to some other structure. So if we were to look at this, and we'll call this the elbow and the, the fingers, and then this is the base of structure, we would say that this elbow region is proximal to the fingers, meaning the elbow area here would be closer to this point of attachment, where the fingers would be distal to the elbow, meaning that they are further uh, from the elbow to the point of attachment. Now the uh, rat does not have an elbow, but we're just using that to explain this terminology. Now here we've laid the rat on its uh, dorsal surface or its back, and we have the ventral or belly side showing. Now this is a male, but uh, present in females only, we would have the mammillary papilla or the nipples. There's generally six on each side. There would be three in the uh, chest area and three in the uh, abdominal area on the females only. Now this right here is showing us the uh, female urogenital uh, structures. And so in the female, there's going to be two openings uh, close together in front of the anus where the male would only have one. The most anterior, which would be this one right in here, is going to be the uh, urethral orifice. And it leads to the urinary structures, the urinary system. This one right in here is the vaginal orifice, and it's the external opening of the reproductive system. And so it's going to lie more posterior to the urethral orifice. Now over here we have the male, and with the male urogenital structures, uh, the reproductive uh, products and the urinary products, uh, this is all going to be uh, in the tip of the penis. And the penis is usually hidden inside a fold of skin. And so uh, it would be a little difficult for us to see on this diagram. Uh, the testes, located right in here, are going to be housed in that large pouch called the scrotum. And uh, the testes would be, uh, if the male is in breeding season, would be enlarged. And if they're not in breeding season, would be smaller. Now here we have the skeletal system of the rat. And the bones that you see on the rat will mirror the bones you would see on other mammals. And we'll begin with the skull. Now the skull is the cranium. It is composed of quite a few other bones. And they're going to be the same bones that you would see in the human or the cat or any other uh, mammal that you may study. So we would see the, the parietal bone up here at the top. And we would see the frontal bone over here. Um, you would have your incisors. Now in the rat they are continuously growing throughout the life cycle of the rat. And that's why the rat's gnaw is to uh, wear the, the bones down. Uh, you would see the zygomatic arch, which would be in this area here. The maxillae is the, the top uh, of the, uh, 
the jaw, the lower jaw area right here is the mandible. Uh, we would get to this area back in here, we would see the occipital bone, we would see the uh, temporal bone right in this area. And um, you would have this opening right in there, which is the external auditory meatus, or the opening for the ear. Moving back, the uh, vertebrae of the, the neck are the cervical vertebrae. The very first one is the atlas. The second is the axis. The remaining ones are just known as cervical vertebrae. The vertebrae that's located in the area where the ribs attach are the thoracic. Past those, we get into the lumbar vertebrae, and then finally we would get into the, uh, the sacrum and the coccyx. We have the scapula uh, being the shoulder blade up front. The collarbone would be the clavicle. The upper bone of the forearms are the humerus. Down here we have two bones, the radius and the ulna. The radius would be on the thumb side. The ulna would be the opposite. We would get into the carpals, the metacarpals, and the phalanges. Moving back, the upper leg bone is the femur, the knee bone is the patella. There are, are uh, two bones in the lower leg. The larger is the tibia, the smaller is the fibula. We get into the tarsals, the metatarsals, and the phalanges. When we get into the hip area, we have um, the tailbone right in this area being the sacrum. Here we have the ilium. We have the pubis being this front portion, the ischium. This all makes up that pelvic area. And then we get into those caudal vertebrae. Now as we begin the muscular system of the uh, rat, first off, know that all of the muscles are attached to at least two different structures, and that's usually bone, but occasionally it can be soft tissue. When the muscles contract, one of these attachment points will move while the other one will remain stationary. The point that moves is the insertion, and the point that does not is the origin. Now we will not be able to cover all the muscles on the, the rat, but we will hit some of the main muscles uh, of the uh, rat musculature. We'll begin with the gastrocnemius. The gastrocnemius is the main calf muscle. Now it is attached to a tendon called the um, Achilles tendon and that's attached down to the the tarsals and if one was to tear that it would uh, cause the uh, entire gastrocnemius muscle to be inoperable. Moving on up we have the uh, the tibialis. This is also known as the tibialis anterior. Uh, this one right here lays on top of the tibia. The um, tibia would be the insertion, and then one of the tarsals or one of the metatarsals would be its uh, origin, and it allows it to flex the foot. Okay, here we have the uh, external oblique. Now, this is a broad, thin sheet that covers most of the lateral and ventral part of the uh, abdomen. This compresses the abdomen and helps to hold those internal organs in place. Now, underneath the external oblique, we have this, um, this thin, uh, muscle known as the rectus abdominis and again this also compresses the abdomen and helps to hold those internal organs in place. Right in this area here we have the latissimus dorsi and this is a wide flat muscle. It's posterior to the shoulder and this muscle right here uh, is what pulls the arm caudally and uh, this right here its insertion is going to be the humerus. Right over in this area, we have that sternomastoideus. This muscle is the one that when it contracts, it rotates the head down. And right here, not labeled, but we have the sternohyoid. It's a narrow band of muscles along the midline. It's um, the bone that pulls the hyoid bone back, and it's the support that's beneath the base of the tongue. Now here we've taken the, the rat and we've laid it on its belly and we're looking at the, the dorsal surface or the, um, the back and we can see that external oblique wraps around from the ventral surface over to the, um, the dorsal surface. And right here we have that spinodeltoideus. And the spinodeltoideus is what pulls the scapula back and it pulls uh, the scapula forward and away from the ribs. In the humans, it, this would be the uh, deltoid muscle. It's also typically in humans the site of a lot of injections or shots. 
right in this area we have the gluteus superficialis. Uh, this right here covers much of that anterior hip region and when we look at this muscle right here it includes the gluteus maximus, the sartorius which is the longest muscle of the body, the tensor fascia lati, um, and you would find these on other mammals. Of course the uh, purpose of the, this gluteus superficialis is to pull the thigh outward. And then right in here we have the biceps femoris, which is a very large muscle. It's posterior to that gluteus. And uh, it pulls the leg out, or it flexes that lower leg. Now here we've taken the rat and we've laid it on its side. And you can see that spinal uh, deltoideus that we've just spoken about. And here we have the very large triceps brachii muscle. The triceps brachii is because it has three major parts, a lateral, a long, and a medial head. And then up above in this area here, we would have the biceps brachii. Right here we have the serratus, or the uh, serratus anterior muscle. This is typically known as the boxer's muscles. Up around this area we have the temporalis muscle associated with the temporalis bone. The masseter is, is right in this area. These are those large cheek muscles and the origin is going to be on the uh, cheekbone or the zygomatic arch and then the maxillae. And these, uh, if you were to grit your teeth, you would feel the masseter muscle. And so this one is the, the major muscle for uh, closing and for chewing. Right in this area, we have the uh, acrimo, uh trapezius muscle. Now this muscle right in here is what pulls the scapula inward and, and closer to the ribs and upward closer to the back of the, uh, the backbone. Okay, so we can see the masseter bone again with this view. We can see that latissimus dorsi. Here's that biceps we were talking about in relation to the, uh, the large triceps. We can see one of the main uh, veins of the body, the uh, external jugular vein. And then right in here we have the intercostals. The intercostals are the muscles that run in between the ribs and these help with uh, breathing. And while these are not anywhere near uh, all the muscles of the, the rat, they do give you an idea of some of the main muscles that you would see during a typical dissection. As we begin the um, internal anatomy of the, uh, the rat, we will begin with the, um, the throat area. And we can see the, the roof of the mouth, that hard palate. Moving back, we would move to the soft palate. Right here, we would see the, uh, the tongue and we can see those incisors and that external nares. Moving on down, we can see the, uh, the thymus, and we can see the, uh, the heart, the heart being four-chambered. On either side of the heart, we have the, uh, the lungs. Below, we have the thin uh, musculature uh, of the diaphragm. We can see that since the thymus has been removed in this area, we can see the trachea and we can see those cartilage rings. Behind the trachea, we have the esophagus. Moving on down, we can see the uh, thymus. Uh, right in this area, we have the heart. It is four-chambered. The upper chambers are the atria. The bottom is the ventricle. We can see that diaphragm right in this area. Just a really nice view showing you how that trachea is in front and then how the um, right behind it we would have the, um, the esophagus. Moving down it remains the trachea until they branch. Once they branch they become the primary bronchioles and they would enter into the uh, lungs. So again, we would see the esophagus and we would see the uh, trachea. Moving down, we've got that thymus sitting on top of the heart. Here's our heart. The upper chambers are the atrium. We can see uh, the right atrium. The lower would be the ventricles. Uh, we can see one of the lungs located right here. In this area, right across here, we would have the diaphragm. Below the diaphragm, we get into the abdominal cavity. The largest organ of the body is the liver. Now, on most mammals, if we raise the liver up, we would see the uh, gallbladder. However, unlike most mammals, the um, rat does not have a gallbladder for storing its bile. So here we can see the rib cage. Again, the diaphragm would be in this area. We have the um, liver. Right here we have the stomach. It is J-shaped. If we were to raise the stomach, the grainy uh, gland that we would see underneath would be the pancreas. Right in here we can see the spleen. Moving on down from the stomach, 
we would have a valve called the pyloric valve and it would uh, open up into the small intestines. The small intestines are divided into three regions. The duodenum is a section attached to the uh, stomach. The middle part is the jejunum and the last part is the ileum and it would open into the large intestines or the colon. Now the junction right next to the small intestines where we have the, the large, that is the, the cecum. So right here we can see just the typical part of the large intestines. This um, has the urinary bladder located right in here. Uh, being a female, we can see the ovary and running from the ovary down into the uterus, which is where the, the two um, fallopian tubes meet, we would have the horns of the uterus. So this tube going from the ovary down to the uterus is the fallopian tube or, or um, the uterine tube. Now the thin tissue that helps to hold the organs in place and is very easily seen in between the small intestines is the mesentery. Over here we can see the kidney. Sitting on top of the kidney is the adrenal gland. Notice its location with regard to the spleen. The main um, vein of the body is the inferior vena cava. The main artery of the body is the abdominal aorta or the descending aorta. Again, we can see those kidneys. Now, the kidneys are behind the peritoneal cavity, so they're known as being retroperitoneal. We can see the um, abdominal aorta. We can see the inferior vena cava here. Uh, notice that going from the kidneys down until we get uh, down to the bottom with the urinary bladder, we have a tube, and this is known as the ureter. Now, here we have the uh, anatomy of the, uh, the male rat. We can see that scrotal sac and right there the penis. And if we were to cut this open, we would be able to see the testes. And sitting on top of the testes is the epididymis. And then running from the, the testes over, we can see that uh, vas deferent in this area right here. Just another view showing you the vas deferent and its location with regard to the uh, urinary bladder. Finally, just uh, one additional view showing the uh, internal structures of the rat where we can see the heart and we can see the trachea, um, the liver. Again, remember that the uh, rat does not have a gallbladder. We can see the small intestines. We can see the stomach. We can see the cecum, the um, seminal vesicles, the vas deferent, the testes with the epididymis on top. We see the uh, urinary bladder. The kidney is not present. Uh, well, here it is. Here's the kidney right there. And running from the kidney down to the bladder, we would have the ureter. Remember that the kidney is uh, retroperitoneal. And so just one additional overview of the body. And we can see those lungs right there. And in this view, again, we can see the liver and we can see the lungs and that four-chambered um, heart and the trachea. Remember that the esophagus is behind the trachea. Uh, we can see the uh, small intestines and the cecum. We can see the large intestines. Here we can see the grainy uh, pancreas that is underneath the stomach, the stomach being raised. Uh, we can see the, the bladder. Uh, so, uh, again, just go through, make sure you can identify all of these key organs on the, uh, the rat.